Hi guys, uh, this is um, a video looking at question 14 from the 32 question revision sheet um, that I gave you to do. And question 14 says write down Newton's second law of motion and illustrate it with a diagram. What's the formula for it? So I looked at a website and I need to credit uh, where I got this from. And it's from a website called uh, zonalandeducation.com and they did uh, a few different statements of the second law and I wanted to, to go over them with you because they're all really saying the same thing in different ways. And this is a very famous law so it's uh, been stated in, in lots of different ways. A few of them are more accurate to the way that uh, Newton actually said it and others are perhaps easier to understand or more intuitive and that's why uh, other people have come up with, with ideas of saying it in other ways. So let's look at the first one. This says um, the effect of an applied force is to cause the body to accelerate in the direction of the force. The acceleration is in direct proportion to the force, so to the magnitude of the force, and in inverse proportion to the mass of the body. So in other words, uh, they're saying that if a force acts on an object, then uh, the acceleration will be the acceleration will be in the same direction as the force. So if the force is acting in that direction, it will accelerate like that. But if the if the object is moving already with a velocity in that direction, for example, and the force acts like that as a resistance would, then the acceleration uh, happens in that direction and therefore the the uh, it will slow down it'll still continue to move in that direction but it's just slowing down uh, so it's in proportion to the force so the bigger that the force is the bigger this force is the bigger the acceleration is going to be so that's pretty uh, common sense and finally it's in inverse proportion to the mass right inverse proportion means it's not proportional to the mass so like the the acceleration will vary on the mass but it will do so uh, such that if you have the same force acting on two objects one of them has a big mass and the other one has a smaller mass same force here if the, these two forces are the same and this is a smaller mass then the acceleration will here will be big and this one here will be tiny so it's inversely proportional to the mass bigger mass smaller acceleration smaller mass bigger acceleration so hopefully that makes sense and all of that comes out of uh, sort of this definition. So the effect of an applied force is to cause it to accelerate in the direction of the force. The acceleration is in direct proportion to the force and inverse to the mass of the body. Let's have a look at a second definition. And here it says, to give a mass m an acceleration a, a net force given by f equals ma is required. So introduces the f equals ma formula and here in the question we had illustrated with a diagram and what's the formula for it so here's a formula for it and uh, the most important thing to remember is that this force here is the net force which means the same thing as unbalanced force and means the same thing as resultant force any of these three words result tant force anything any of these words uh, net and balance resultant are the same and it means when you have several forces acting on an object what matters is the leftover force so if this is five newtons and that is five newtons and this is five newtons this one will cancel with that one and you can ignore them basically they won't cause any acceleration but uh, this guy here doesn't have anything uh, here to balance it out so the block will accelerate in that direction accelerate okay and depending on the mass then you know the acceleration so uh, you can also look at the equation as in if you have a force of 100 newtons for example and that's equal to m times a if you have a very big mass then you only need a small acceleration to make up for that 100 so a big mass means a small acceleration but if you have 100 newtons and you have uh, ma and you have a really small mass then you need a really big acceleration to make up for the for the force or to to to, uh, to account for the force okay and that's the leftover force and uh, hopefully that makes sense also for the second newton's law 
The third statement that we had was the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and it's inversely proportional to its mass. So that's pretty much the same as the first one. The direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the net force acting on the object. So that's very similar to the first one and we don't need to go into that very much. Uh, another one, another way of saying it is the effect of an applied force is to cause the body to accelerate in the direction of the force uh, and the acceleration is the indirect proportion to the force and then inverse proportional to the mass of the body so that's also uh, the, the same way of stating it uh, as the first one and the third and here we have a slightly different uh, way of saying it and this I like because it's more technical and uh, you would, uh, if somebody asked you and you said this, uh, you would impress them a little bit more because this is probably the closest to the way Newton actually said it. But if you don't understand the other ways yet, this one might be uh, a little bit trickier. It's closest to Newton's way. The rate of change of momentum. So rate of change of momentum is proportional to the impressed force and in the direction in which the force acts. So what was the formula for momentum? Momentum was mass times velocity. That was momentum, which was P. That tells you the momentum of an object if you just multiply the mass times the velocity. So the rate of change of momentum means the uh, uh, how quickly the momentum is changing. So it changes both the mass and the velocity, takes those into account. Uh, when you say, well, the mass of an object is normally constant, then it doesn't matter, so surely th then I just care about the rate of change of the velocity, which is the acceleration, and I can just multiply it by m. And then you have your formula f equals ma. But Newton's law uh, it took into account both the mass and the velocity, and that was really intelligent, because later on Einstein came and discovered that the mass of, the mass of objects actually changes as you get closer to the speed of light the mass changes, so then you need to actually take into account both the change of the mass and the velocity. That's outside of the syllabus, but it's good to know that the, the most sort of full way of stating the second law is that the, the change of momentum is proportional to the impressed force, so not only the acceleration, the change of momentum. And it is in that direction in which the force acts, we already know that from before. So if uh, you had this in an example and they asked you to, to do this, then I would recommend uh, you say one of the of the previous ones probably the the first one is the most um, useful kind of accurate one the effect of an applied force or or resultant actually I would like I would rather you use the net force one so uh, this one the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force that's the key word acting on it so the acceleration is proportional to the net force acting on it and inverse proportion, inversely proportional to its mass. The direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the net force acting on the object. So I would use this one. And uh, really, if you write f equals ma and you rearrange this a little bit, so we divide uh, by m, then we have f divided by m is equal to a. So then you can see that the acceleration is proportional to the f, because the f is on top and it's inversely proportional to the m because the m is at the bottom so really that's a way of saying uh, this which is also contained in this equation here which is the way you normally learn it in um, okay so let me think I think that covers the second law quite well and we can um, um, you uh, do question 15 which is just an example of of using this law in order to to see how we could use it so uh, it's uh, question 15 says um force of 30 newtons pushes on a trolley of mass of four kilograms so that we have a trolley believe it or not and that's four kilograms and there's a force they're acting with 30 newtons and it says what's the acceleration so it's pretty uh, simple we've got our formula f equals ma but we want to find the acceleration so we want to leave the a alone we want to move the m so we divide this side by m we get a that side by m we get f over m and so uh, or you can think about this in uh, as in you the m is multiplying here so it goes to the other side dividing and now uh, we can just put in the f the number so 30 divided by 4 that's our acceleration 
and uh, what does that work out to? Let's see. Uh, four times seven is twenty-eight, and then I have another four left over. Um, so s four times zero point five is two. Twenty-eight plus two is thirty. So the acceleration would then be seven point uh, five. 7.5 times 4 should come out to 30 and we need to put it in s meters per second squared right so that would be an, an easy way you can do that in the calculator otherwise and this is uh, an easy way of, of uh, using your f equals ma the simplest kind of question you could get and then you get asked another one which is question 16 Let's see if I can find some space here with all these uh, statements of Newton's second law uh, it's a bunch of space here that's good um, this is like an infinite blackboard, I love it. Uh, what else? The best thing is that, that you don't have to clean it either. Um, okay, uh, 14, 15, 16. Question 16 says, what's the mass of a cat which accelerates at 9.8 meters per second squared? So that's the acceleration. We have a cat uh, when acted on a force by 56 newtons. 56 newtons is the force, and so we have our cat here, uh, beautiful cat, and it's acted on a force of 56 newtons, and it accelerates at 9.8 meters per second squared. So what is the mass? So okay, F equals m a. Uh, then now they're asking us for the mass, so the A is multiplying, so it goes to the other side, dividing. Same thing as dividing both uh, sides by by A. And so our force divided by our acceleration will give us the mass. So the mass would then be equal to 56 newtons divided by 9.8, which is the acceleration. And that I do need to do with the calculator. Uh, and that comes out to be 56 divided by 9.8 uh, 5.71 so to three significant figures 5.71 is three significant figures and we need the units kilograms mass of the cat is that much um, great so that's all good we only have a couple of minutes left in this video, but then the next uh, question, which is number uh, 17, says, explain what a resultant force is, and illustrate it with a diagram. So, as I said before, super important, resultant force uh, is the same thing as a net force, and that's the same thing as uh, un uh, an un balanced force same thing these three guys and uh, what it is it and illustrated with a diagram well if you have a force like that and you have a force like that and this is 10 newtons and that's uh, 100 newtons then your unbalanced force uh, so these are your forces and then here you can write your resultant force uh, is 90 newtons and you draw your block here if you want uh, so this would encapsulate the meaning of forces uh, of, of the resultant force and here if you wanted you could write forces uh, total forces or um, uh, individual forces if you want in the in the visual forces and these are your result of force different thing okay this takes into account all the individual forces um, all right so I think we pretty much run out of time and in the next question we'll do uh, the question about the skydiver which is number 18 in the next video sorry uh, see you in the next video